we're trying to solve this limit. Uh, first, we have infinite product. Then we let x approaches one from the left hand side. First, partial sum, pa partial product. So I have n goes from zero to capital N. Of one plus x to the n plus one over one plus x to the n to the power of x to the power of n. Now denote denote with a capital N. If I take the log of a capital N. All right. So first of all, first of all, I have if we fix n, right? Fix n, we take log. So we have sum of logarithm. Right, so what does it look like? So sum n goes from 0 to capital N. Right. Log, take the log inside. Log of this part, the take down the power. x to n log. Log of this, take the log, difference of log. Log 1 plus x to the n plus 1 minus log. 1 plus x to the This is partial sum. And so that two sums. n goes from 0 to capital N. x to the n. Log 1 plus x to the n plus 1 minus n goes from 0 to capital N. x to the n times log 1 plus x to the n. Right, two sums. Then I perhaps I'll change change this sum, re-index this sum. That x to the power of n plus 1. First x to the n plus 1. Then of course I multiply 1 over x. Right, power becomes n plus 1. It's still the same thing. Now I re-index, re-index n plus 1 into n, uh, into n, right, previous was n plus 1, n goes from 0, so n plus 1 goes from 1, right, this time it's n, I start from 1, so n start from 1, still the same thing. Previous n plus 1 end at n equals capital N, so capital N plus 1. So end at capital N plus 1 this time. Still the same thing, just re-indexed. Now what do I do? I, I take the uh, last term out of this sum and take the first term out of this sum. Then we have exactly the same sum, right? <coughs> uh, not exactly. But I think so 1 over x at the, in front. All right, so let me see. The last term, last term of this sum, what does it look like? First, I have 1 over x. <clears throat> then I have x to the capital N plus 1. Right? Log 1 plus x to the capital N plus 1. Okay? And also, first term of this sum, n equals 0, right? 1 times, uh, one times log 2 minus log 2. Okay. This is constant, don't worry about that. So later we let capital N approach infinity. Right? So capital N, so we fix x, right, fix x, fix x. X is, will approach 1 from left hand side. So we can just, without loss of generality, we can just assume that uh, right now we assume X is some fixed number in between 0 and 1, since it'll get close enough to 1. So this is fine. This assumption is reasonable. Right, so imagine X is fixed. Let N approach infinity. This term will disappear. Right, this term don't worry, constant. Don't worry. <clears throat> Perhaps get rid of that and also get rid of that. Right? So anyway, this term will disappear. And so will this term. So log one, log one is zero. So this will just disappear. Right? 
as n approaches infinity. So this is fine. This is also fine. And we're left with the remaining of the sum, right? So n goes from 1 up to n. <coughs> we combine, combine factor, uh, factor the sum. Then we have 1 over x minus 1, right? Plus bracket 1 over x minus 1. Common factor is common sum. n goes from 1 to capital N inside. I have x to the n times log 1 plus x to the n. Right. We, all we have to worry about is this part. And so, this time I want to rewrite, expand log into infinite sum, infinite polynomial sum, right? log ex expansion of log Taylor expansion. It's meaningful when x is in, in between negative 1 and 1, excluding negative 1. So x is within this restriction, so it's meaningful. Right? Safely expand it. So this sum, this sum, perhaps I'll just rewrite, let me just rewrite into infinite, 1 to infinity. Let me just rewrite 1 over x minus 1 times 1 to infinity, x to the n. I'm going to rewrite log into uh, log into infinite sum. So outside I have infinite sum. Inside I still have another infinite sum. Let me call it m goes from 1 to infinity. Right, we treat x to the n as a whole entity. Right. So that way I have is it negative 1 to the power m plus 1. Right. And over m and whole entity x to the power n bracket to the power of m. So that way, I would just combine this. So that is equal to 1 over x minus 1. So since here, sum is m, so x to n can just multiply inside. So this one, right? multiply n, 1 to infinity, double sum, m goes from 1 to infinity. Negative 1, m plus 1 over m, x to the uh, n times m, and plus n. I just add up the power together. So this looks fine. Right, so this double sum. First, first sum with respect to m, then uh, sum with respect to n. But now the question is, can I switch the order of summation, right? Now, can I first sum n, then sum m? The answer is yes. Uh, long story short, it is legal. That is equal to 1 over x minus 1. Sum. Sum. Right. m, the outside sum. Right. Inside, inside sum. n. Infinity. Negative one. N plus one. N x to the N M plus N. Right, so this is in fact a geometric. So now treat M as a constant. Right? N is changing. Right, x to the uh, rewrite it into x to the M plus one bracket power of n, same thing. Treat x to the power of n plus 1 as a whole thing. 
So common the geometric series, common ratio is this part. Right? Okay. So this is constant, this is a constant. Right? 1 over x minus 1. Outside, m goes from 1 to infinity. Inside. Right? So copy down the constant. Constant. All right, formula for geometric series. And first, so 1 minus common ratio x to the n plus 1. First term is what? <clears throat> x to the uh, n plus 1 times 1. Right, infinite geometric series. So this is done. So multiply this constant inside. Now treating, treating x as a constant. Multiply this inside here. Right, this is perfectly fine. So multiply by x at the bottom, 1 minus x. Right? And so get rid of this and simplify that. Right? Reduce the power by 1. So this is what we have. Now, now the question becomes, the question becomes, first we are supposed to work out infinite sum, then we let x approach 1 from the left hand side. Now, can we first let x approach 1, then do infinite sum? The answer is yes, again. And I'm going to skip over the proof. Perfectly legal. It has something to do with the absolute uh, uniform con convergence. So perfectly legal. First, let's do x approach the 1 from left hand side. Right? So this is constant. So this can be done by uh, L'Hopital's rule. So we can just use L'Hopital's rule. Let x approach 1. So this is in indeterminate form. Right? 0 over 0. So by writing down x to the multiply everything out x to n minus x to the n plus 1 over 1 minus x to the n plus 1. L'Hopital's right. rule. L'Hopital's rule. n x n minus 1 minus n plus 1 x to the n and derivative of this negative n plus 1 x to the n right right now we let n x approach 1 right. so approach m minus m plus 1 n negative m plus 1. So this just becomes what? <coughs> negative 1, negative 1. 1 over m plus 1, right? As x approaches 1 from the left hand side. Right. So now we just work out this infinite sum. Right? Infinite sum. M from 1 to infinity of negative 1 m plus 1 over n times this part. Now let's rewrite this sum into, into m 1 to infinity negative 1 m plus 1. I'm going to separate the uh, one the fraction, right? separation of the fraction, equal 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1, right? Still the same thing, right? 1 over n times n plus 1. This is uh, easily verifiable, right? so, uh, partial fraction. So this becomes 2 sums. n goes 1 to infinity, negative 1 m plus 1 is 1 over n. 
bonus. And one to infinity. Still negative one. M plus one. One over M plus one. Right now I just uh, first change M plus one into M. Now M supposed to go from one, right? Go from one. M plus one go from two. So M go from two. But I still want it to go to go from first of all, I can I just make right now I go from two to infinity. Then I change power into m plus one. Then I need to divide it by negative one to make it the same, right? Divide it by negative one. Same as multiply by negative one. Right? Ne ne multiply negative one into here becomes plus. Right now, I still want to go from one. I still go, want to go from one. Then I need to get rid of the first term, right? To make it the same. First term, m, one, one, one. I need to minus one to make it still the same. In that case, I have exactly the uh, this sum, this sum, same starting point, right? Same format, and negative one m plus one, one over n, right? I got plus twice of them, right? So this becomes twice of, of I followed by negative one. So this is the log. This twice of log one plus x when x is equal to one. Right? Imagine imagine it's right, one to the power of m over m, negative one, m plus one, right? The same thing, right? Log expansion. Right? Log of two. Right, there's a negative one. Right. So here, th this is the result of uh, of this as n go to infinity and x go to one. Right, that's the limit of this result. So, but still here I have. So this term is gone. Still have negative log two. Right, so eventually I should have. I should have I just log two minus one. Right, so the log, log so this is log e. I log two over e. Right? So this is the result of the limit of taking the log of a n. Right, so before I take take a log, uh, what's the limit? Before I take so two over e, the original limit. 